week's episode is brought to you by Tabletop Backer Party on Facebook, which is the largest board game crowdfunding group on this side of the internet. Featured this week with our sponsor, we have Foundations of Rome by Arcane Wonders that takes city building to a whole new level, literally. For two to four city planners, you will fight for space for building your miniature monuments for about 60 to 90 minutes as players will be purchasing lots, demolishing buildings, and creating a masterpiece of a city to maintain their economy and victory points for the end of the game in this Kickstarter exclusive game that will not be available through normal retail channels. Hello, everyone. Welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter show with Glory Hound and Dr. Glory Hogg. And you want to say something before? Just real quickly, as you guys know, I like to talk. Um, so you may have noticed that our sponsored ad this week is Foundations of Rome. And we're actually talking about Foundations of Rome. Just want to make sure you know that there's no double crossing. We, uh, everything on our show is what we actually pick. And then the other stuff is picked by Table Talk Backers Group. So that's right. That's their featured this product. This is the first time this. we've had like a complete a crossover. Crossover. Yeah. A crossover. On the same week and everything. So <laughs> same week, right. Definitely not paid for our opinions <laughs> on any of these games. Hello. You might not even like all of our opinions. Welcome to everybody in the chat today. It looks like we have Alan up here. We have Michael and Cassandra. Hello, everybody. A Alan. Oh, and there's Battle Cry as well. We got a ton Preston of people on here. I know. Andrew's on. There's a bunch of people on. There's a lot of really, really good games this week. Oh, we millions have of dollars worth. Mil oh, gosh. These campaigns are freaking huge. Oh, look at Andrew likes your hair, Dr. Glory oh, Hog. Oh, oh, there's Silver Liam. Hi. Well, welcome to everybody that's who joining us today. We, like, man, the, when I saw these Kickstarters this week, and Alan is completely right, like, the quietness is over. Boom. Like, tons of awesome Kickstarters. We have millions worth up here yes. on the board. It's going to be a tough decision. I'm excited to hear everything from you guys and what you guys think about these campaigns and make some decisions together on this. I only want to back one of them. <gasps> only one? Yeah. Can you have only one this week, guys? I don't know. It's tough, but I plan these to stick big, by These are big, right? There, there's a lot of big ones on there. There's some that are close, but I don't know. So uh, so we know you're up and on the up and up and if you don't like the foundations of Rome. Well, I just thought it was <laughs> funny because that stuff gets sent to us later, way after we pick usually. Yeah, and so it's usually like, last you know, I minute. build out the general list and then she yeah. refines the list. And so I'm always excited when she picks the ones that I'm excited about. I'm like, all right, cool. We're both excited about this game. We get to talk about it. And then it ended up happening to be on our ad at the very beginning of the show. And I was like, oh. Okay. Ma uh, that hasn't happened before. Martin's team foundations of Rome and charity board gamers like millions is right. Yeah. That's right. These are huge, huge Kickstarters. Like Hi. on Monday, these Kickstarters had already raised two point five million. Oh that was my gosh. Monday. My gosh. It yeah. is Friday in case you guys have lost track. Well, you know, sometimes it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's crazy. Yeah, I don't even know what to do. And uh, one other little quick announcement. It's her birthday on Monday. Oh my god, you didn't have to tell everybody. I did. No, you didn't. It's her birthday no, on you Monday. didn't. Hi, and Kabuki for a kid. lot of us, it's a holiday in the States. Oh, God. So feel free to celebrate Glory Hound's birthday on the 20th. By playing games. Playing games for me, guys. Play games and send them to us, and we will we will compare. What I have a it? feeling we're going to be playing some games. No matter what, we're playing Dead of Winter. Roll, for sure. roll one out for the homie. Roll one out for, for your me? homie, Glory Yeah, Hound. that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's happy. It, it only works out every couple years where her birthday happens to be on Martin Luther King Day. And bam, Ooh. it worked out together perfectly. Kids off, I'm off, everyone's off. It's great. So I'm pumped. Kabuki Kids saying their current Kickstarter, Shiver Me Timbers, which I believe yeah. is, didn't that go on again or something? Yes, we on actually that one? Yeah, that. I thought we, we had. it on the original thing, and it was one of those ones that we were like, yeah, this one looks really cool, but unfortunately and just didn't fund. the Black Sonata expansion. I don't have Black Sonata, but now I want it. So, like, I'm I'm on that one, totally. Yeah. And thank you for the birthday wishes, guys. <laughs> like, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> I know. She hates it when I say that, but I do it anyways. I do. I, I know. It's like on Facebook. I want people to celebrate my birthday. She's, like, the opposite. It's one of those things where, like, you can maybe you can change it so that you nobody can, knows yeah, and then so. you change it forward and back all the time <laughs> she's that person at the office where you're like oh hey i uh, heard it was your birthday last month uh, that's why you took the day off and you're like oh yeah i did and everything and but i'm the opposite i'm like it's my birthday i'm taking it off i'll see you guys never the only I'm probably time gonna quit the so. only time that you mention your birthday is when you specifically get cake 
Like, that's the thing. You need cake. So here's the deal, guys. I've ordered her a couple different gifts. One <laughs> of them is coming. <laughs> well, one of them is already here. The other one's supposed to be delivered today. And they're both <laughs> – I'll show them whenever she gets them and everything, right? And I'm really bad about wanting to give the gifts right away and have her open them right away. She wanted to wait. But the first thing I said, hey, I've got a game day thing set up. We're going to get together with some people. And she said, cool. Is there going to be cake? And I went, crap. Where do I find the guys. cake that she likes on short notice? I might have messed it up already. Guys. You always have I a cake forget. for your birthday, right? I was always an ice cream guy, <laughs> so like I always just wanted ice cream. So we would stop at like Baskin Robbins or something for my birthday, and so I'm just used to like picking it up the day of, not like having it pre-planned out. But I did get you two gifts, so I guess that'll do. That'll no, do. Two gifts. All right, first up, and I'll wear my shirt all day on Monday. We have that should be a bonus for you. Pacific Rails. This is by Vesuvius Media. This is going to be for two to four players. It's going to last about 60 to 90 minutes. This is not just a railroad style building game, but there's a mm -hmm. lot of worker placement in this game. And there's like a lot of decisions based on decisions based on decisions in this game, which is kind of crazy because you're placing workers to get resources, but also strategically place them so you can get extra actions, but then also build your train to hopefully be able to fire a train off to also get these extra actions to just build some railroads strategically to cut off other players and get across the board. It is insane. But you can also use other people's railroad to finish yours. It's to end the game. I went into this Kickstarter going, oh, okay, this is going to be a railroad game. We had just played, what was the Irish one? Irish Gage. Irish Gage. I was like, oh, okay, love marketing, love railroad building, like Pacific Rails. I'm excited. And I was like, holy crap, this is, this is a heavy game. Y well, so what's weird is that normally I stay away from train games, not because there's any particular reason, but usually they're not, they don't strike me as super exciting, right? But I do like this story because this story is super important and I am an Old West kind of buff, right? So I really enjoy the story where the two different continent, you know, the two lines meet together to make a, a transcontinental line. Um, I really enjoy that part of history, right? So I thought, okay, well, that's cool. So this one, you know, and then we just played Irish Gage, which kind of changed my mind about some train games because it's a little bit, it's a lot much lighter, but it's an economic game. Like, okay, I like economic games. So I've been actually like really, really looking at train games and trying to get more into them. So I was super excited about this one. And then as you take a look at it, I'm like, this actually is more worker placement than it is train game so or anything else. And it's really heavy worker placement yeah, as Martin far as the way it all works. Martin's comment is 100% correct. Pacific Rails looks like a gateway game to try to get the Euro game players into the 18xx games. And I 100% agree because, like, starting out, you're excited about this being the train game and getting from one point to the other point. And then as you delve deeper into this, you're like, holy crap, you are playing games on top of games to strategically get all this stuff together. Yeah. And for me, I was like overwhelmed at that point. I was like, I thought this was just a simple train game, but I have to worry about not only my train going over the different types of areas like water and what is it like? Which that's pretty normal. Yeah. But then also this whole like going to part. the Senate portion even. You got to lobby for money. Yeah, lobby for things and stuff. I was like, oh, my God. And then these carts here and having certain people in your carts to help you whenever you fire off your train that yeah, you like get to do specialist. those. Yeah, you get to do those things. It was so intense. Like this game here, I don't know if I get a huge feel of it until it actually gets to the table. And then you have this whole cowboy cat aspect here where – you can have like two hats and you get them if you've got and various well they situations. End up going to other players. So you're trying to right. get p y the other players not to get these cowboy hats. And I was like, oh, man. Like and then if they already have two cowboy hats, you get like a, a bonus resource. There's a lot going on with it, essentially. Yeah. Hello, Aussie. Thanks so much for joining us today. So first, I have to say the deluxe components look amazing for this game. Right. And they've even upgraded the wood even further. Did they really? I yeah, so the I didn't wood look. is like more of a painted look where like w the sawed off end, then they got sawed off. Well, see, there you oh, go. Right they there. look so cool, guys. Look, look at that. Look more like what wood would look really <gasps> look like. I love that. If there was a woodchuck here, he could verify <laughs> that is what it looks like. <laughs> we don't have a lot of trees in Arizona, so I don't know what Do you don't know what like actual there. cut wood looks like? I That's understandable. I mean... I, I mean, I chopped down I've weeds, seen it in tree. Skyrim before you where, you chop, in Skyrim? where you chop logs and stuff. And you're like, oh, okay, this is what chopped wood looks like. Yeah, but I don't think I've actually ever had to chop logs, maybe once or twice. But there's not a lot of making fires in Arizona unless you're up north and you're camping. And even then, 
You just kind of find what's around. Get the no fires yeah. thing. We have a where completely like, nope, different poor situation. No going fires. On. Yeah, most time it's a no fire thing. I have the base pledge for this at thirty five dollars though. Yeah, so that's this is like Greg's. This is what Greg wants right here. <laughs> a game <laughs> that costs less than forty dollars. So I'm, I'm actually sad that he's not here to comment about how he would still want to try it before he buys it. But at least it's in his price range. So hello, Walters. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Bad I'll cry. Upgraded wood. Yes. <laughs> Everybody needs upgraded wood hey. in their life, okay? As you get older, <laughs> you need to upgrade that wood. You do. Um, so <laughs> Alan is making a good point about is it even worth doing it if you're not going to do deluxe? And a lot of times that's definitely the train I'm on because if you're going to wait until – That's the train you're oh on. My oh, my God, guys. If you're going to wait – uh, I mean, if you're going to get the non-Kickstarter version one, the non-deluxe one, I mean, you might as well just wait for retail. It's going to be the same. I, I haven't seen anything where they said it's going to be dramatically different. So I can definitely see your point. If you're not going uh, deluxe, then you might as well just wait. But the deluxe is also $25 more, which you start getting to the point where the game's 35 and then deluxe is $25 more. It feels like you're doubling the price for the same game. And I kind of, I don't know, I have like a, once you go over like that $15, $20 rule for like a a deluxe component game and if it starts getting close to doubling the price of the base game i'm kind of like is it worth it as far as vesuvius media and being at conventions and stuff i've i believe i've seen them at some conventions but they're not as prolific as some other game companies where you're going to see them at bgg and you're going to see them at paxes too and you're going to see them at all these different places so ellen kind of to go back to your question there with is it even worth it? I would say yes in this case, just because even if you're backing it at the $35 range here, you know that you're going to get it in and you're going to get it early and everything. And if you do miss it, it's not like you're just going to be able to pick it up anywhere. Okay. This is not a game that I see in – their games are not games that I see in your FLGSs, like your friendly right, local game stores. Right, Dwarves Fall and Dwarves Spring. And right. So okay, I would say yes. Or, you know, you're going to be purchasing it online, I would imagine. I don't know about that one, you know? Okay, that makes sense. So you're you're more worried that if you yeah. don't back it, you just might not see it easily. And Cassandra says they were at Origins and are super nice gamers. Yeah, I believe they hit up, and I want to say maybe they were at Gen Con as well. But I know that I haven't seen them at some of the other ones that I've been to that are not as, you know. I was saying by the Kabuki. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> that are not as pronounced in the community because okay. Vesuvius Media is originally like an app-based game company. Okay. You know? I did not know. Yeah. Right? No, wait. Are they? Oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of something else, right? I have no idea. I don't remember. Point. I'm going to have to go back and look, guys. Sorry. Don't quote me on that. But we, we did <laughs> back Dwarves Fall uh, whenever that first we came did. out. Like we a, did. Like over a year or two ago. So. Right. For some reason, I was thinking of Lucky Duck Games, I think, with oh, Vikings yeah. Gone Wild because I remember playing some app-based game stuff. But they kind of had like the same art. So never mind, guys. Never that mind. That is a whole different beast. <laughs> I am slightly in love with Lucky Duck Games. So well, we can't talk about that. I would back whatever they're doing. I love pretty much everything they've done. For $35 for this heavy game, or as Martin put it, the intro to the 18xx game, <laughs> like but it's more $35 is excellent. Yeah, d but do you think it's more worker placement like than it is what you'd consider a train game? Because it is not really... It's about tr it's a worker placement game about trains. I don't really think it's a train game. Ooh, Stephanie says Vesuvius Media is Canadian. Okay. Yeah, that's a whole different Way to country. derail the combo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the train jokes are just going to keep coming. <laughs> hey. They're just going to keep chug chug chugging along. Uh I enjoy train games. Okay. And I know what you're saying is like is this more worker placement than the other? It seems like worker placement portion drives the entirety of this game for right. the most part. And then when exactly you're going to trigger certain actions because you do have to collect the certain materials for things. And placing these workers in a way where you're going to get more actions in during the game and throughout it, like it's... I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, it actually probably is more of a worker placement game. And then yeah. you almost have like this whole mini thing game going on where you're trying to get the route from one edge to the other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that seems almost more like just how you trigger the end game than it is right. anything else. I don't have anything bad to say about this game other than the fact that I don't know if this is a game specifically for me as a player. Like, because I got super in-depth into all of it. And then I was like, oh, my God, like, this is going to be a huge like 
monumental game to get on the table and play. And I don't know if it would be friendly to newer gamers and stuff. This is definitely a gamer's game, you know? Definitely. Yeah, because even if you watch, it's like, the, if you look at the man <laughs> versus a meeple video and they're talking about how you get your workers back and how they interact with each other and stuff, there's a lot of complexity there. And until I can actually play it, I just don't know if I will enjoy that and it'll feel natural or if it's just going to feel like, why am I doing this? This is doing what? That triggers this? Like, why is this happening? And that can sometimes throw me off of a game if it doesn't just feel intuitive. I want my games to feel intuitive and fun overall. That's why theme is important to me. Overall, when I'm done with the game, I don't want to feel like I just did a big crunchy homework assignment. <laughs> I want to feel like, you don't like I did homework? something that was <laughs> intense and fun and had my heart racing and was back and forth. I don't know where it's going. And that's kind of how I was this week where I've gone completely like up and down um, as far as like which game I thought was going to be my favorite versus right. as I looked more into it, which one then led up. And then I mean, I came to you today. I was like, I changed my mind. This one's my, this is you the did. one. You changed your mind several times throughout this the week, day. Yeah, yeah this, this this week was there definitely <laughs> up and down, up and down. And, you know, obviously I was re-reviewing them today and stuff. And I feel like I, I finally have solidified my choice. So we have some interesting comments here. So Stephanie's video says it's actually 50 and 50 as far as worker placement and engine Somebody. building, which is really interesting. Okay. And <laughs> Alan says, the map looks like an app designed for DOS. Yeah, Alan's game. <laughs> not big on the actual <laughs> art of it, which art is hard. Yeah. Art is so subjective. There's, I mean, like the next game we're going to talk about has like that kind of classic leader art, um, which I really enjoyed on the idea of it for Root and Vast, but I didn't like it as much for this game for some reason, and I and don't know why. New Board Order says that, you know, sometimes there's high shipping costs to watch out for. Yeah. And I really think that's important as well as you're going down. It could be $35, but, you know, you want to make sure there's not a $25 shipping cost. So I'm going to scroll down real quick to the edge here and just double check. I will tell you, this was like my number one pick for a while. I thought this was going to be the one because I was like, man, it's $35. Of course, we're in talks about buying another really expensive game right now. So <laughs> I was thinking, all right, it's $35. It looks like a good game. We're going to play it. And I've really really hyped up on Irish Gage right now. So I'm like really trying to get more games to give me that same type of feeling. This game, unfortunately, will not do that. It is a completely separate, different animal. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I usually like worker placement, but I just feel like the way the worker placement works in this game will, will actually almost be more fiddly than I like. And it, I think I'll just be annoyed by it. But that being said, I, I feel like I have to get this one into my hands before I can make a final, final decision on it. I'm going to say if these sort of very in-depth and heavy games are your jam get the deluxe copy on this guys because those deluxe pieces are amazing looking those little tiny cowboy hats and all those little upgraded wood pieces and stuff everybody needs those in their life if you are looking to try a heavy game for a very inexpensive cost i mean 35 bucks is nothing for a heavy game like that you know uh that would this would be the time to try it you know <laughs> Oh, somebody's down there brushing their teeth. Our dog's brushing their teeth with, with a toothbrush. It's Star. not his toothbrush. It's toothbrush, not his toothbrush. Which is now <laughs> not a toothbrush, guys. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> left of it. It was At least it was bamboo. <gasps> I guess he's part panda or part something. Part panda. Well, you know. I was trying to figure out right. what that crazy crunching sound was I could hear. And, yeah, he was eating somebody's toothbrush. I'm guessing it was my daughter's toothbrush. Dr. Glory Hog, would you back this game? As it stands out today, no, this is not my favorite game of this week. Not your favorite game yeah, of this week. Yeah, and I don't week. think I'm going to back it. I think this one, since I was leaning more towards the retail pledge anyways, that it might be one I would try to pick up at retail or really? play first. But yeah, I wasn't leaning towards the deluxe. It's a lot of just, it's a lot of stuff. Like, I'm not super excited about telephone pole miniatures. Like, yeah. And that's, you know, what's going on in that one. It seems like there's a lot of stuff. I really feel like I need to play this one to, to know if I'm going to like it the complexity that's added into it, or if it's just going to feel like it was just kind of put on top of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to say at $35, I would back this game. For $35, yeah. For $35. But see, my point you know? is similar to Alan's, where at $35, that's probably what the retail is going to be. I could just wait for it to get it at retail and just, you know, pick it up, open it up, and play it same day. Versus yeah, waiting. but you're not necessarily going to find this everywhere at retail. Like, you'll find it online, maybe, and then th I, that's probably mostly about it. And then at maybe a couple of the bigger conventions, you know? Okay. Yeah, that's fair. If so, so if you're worried about missing this game, even at the $35, you're saying to back it, where I'm right, kind of okay just right. picking it up when I see it eventually. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That's, I think that's where our difference is. All I'm right. not against it, but I definitely want to play it. We have so many so many good games this week, guys. Oh, yeah. Big ones. And there's <gasps> other ones that we can't, can't wait to talk about next oh week, too. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so next up, we have Oath, Chronicles of Empire and Exile by Later Games. 
And this is for one to six players. This is going to last about 45 to 120 minutes. This game is really interesting. You also have that sort of thing where everybody's going to be playing different factions, and they all have different rules with those factions. Slightly, so yeah. So, yeah, not all the rules, but it goes along the same basis as Vast and Root and stuff. I think it's gotten less of that of that asymmetrical aspect though because you've got like the chancellor and then you've got like the exiles and i think they kind of have separate goals they're going for but they're based off of like the goals that have been put out for that game instead of like this plays completely separately and, and, I, and i wasn't trying to interrupt you this is kind of like a bigger thing i was thinking about i've always said like i really like asymmetrical games i don't think i do i think i like asymmetrical player powers where there's one or two things that are different, or you've got kind of different goals or secret objectives, well, but everyone's playing a completely different game like that can happen in Root and stuff. I don't think I like that as much as I thought I did. That's variable player powers, because yeah. variable player powers is going to give each faction a slight, a slight like change, but an asymmetrical game gives each faction a different goal in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I th so I think I like variable player powers more than right, because asymmetrical because I don't like trying to teach a game differently to three other people and then trying to remember how I'm supposed to play it too. Right, and that's... Because if one person fails, I feel like the game fails. Like if one person doesn't know how to play the cats, then it's like, okay, well, you're not keeping in th that group in check and then that, sh that group's going to end up winning. So you have to have everyone kind of has to be a very equal level and experience to play those games and really fully enjoy that's it. That's where I was kind of going with this game is that if you are... If you already like Root and Vast, or you already don't like Root and Vast, this is going along the same lines as far as, like, it's very asymmetrical in kind of what you're doing. You know, you do have, like, a one versus many sort of thing with this, where you have the Chancellor, and then all the other exiles, and you're trying to kind of take power from each other, but also you kind of have to work together at times as well. That part of it's cool. I really like that. But, again, you're teaching almost... And this one I don't feel like is as bad as Vast Not and Root. Not bad. Yeah, where you're teaching completely different factions. This one, you have a lot of the same things happening where, you know, you have the same movement. You know, you have the same, uh, what is it, where you're trying to get other groups and stuff like that to follow you and everything. Right. Get your war bands together. It's but more political, this one is, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, this kind, like. of, you know what this kind of reminds me of? The way that they have the board set up. And this is, like, just a little bit of it reminding me of, like, that uh, Gameland Games, the very first one that they did where you set out all the different locations and then you move, like, your people, the kingdoms, tiny epic kingdoms. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you each play different factions and you can move across the kingdom. Okay. Except this one has, like, all this crazy diplomacy stuff and everything happening in it, you know? like Right. Like, I think the best part, the thing that this game has going for it that I really enjoyed. So then this one all of a sudden pushed Pacific Rails out and I was like, this is going to be the one. <laughs> and uh, I was watching, and I was like, I really like the idea of being a chancellor and then promoting someone from exile to be a citizen. And then they help you with your goals, but then you got to watch out because they might you know, backstab you and then take over. I thought that was very, very interesting stuff. I think for me, the, the kind of rough spot I hit is that when you watch them kind of do some of the gameplay video is that everybody plays different based off of a different thing. So this game is very much, um, it's algebra. If X is this, <laughs> then you know, then this uh, this ends up being this. If Y is this, this ends up being this. So it's like if you're the chancellor and you're in the spot, it takes two effort to do this. But if you're in this spot, it takes three effort. But if you're on this end of the map, it takes one effort. And if you're over here and then this person's in play, it takes two point five point seven eight effort. I think I put two points in there. But the point is there's a lot of different variables. Right. It feels like you're almost like you're playing flux, right? Where everything changes like on every single turn almost where like, okay. you know, everything's just constantly changing and in flux and you have to like constantly rule check. And I feel like this is a game that I would be like faced in the rule book going like, okay, in this situation, since I am here and over here and that card's in play and you're right there, then I can move for 1.58. So comments wise, Effort. Cassandra says, I'm backing it. She's, Walters she's doing Pacific Rails is, is she's backing. super excited. Oh, was that Pacific mm -hmm. Rails? Okay. Okay. And then let's see here. <laughs> starting to feel like they're beating a dead horse here. I have Root and Vast, one and two, but this seems pretty samey. And we haven't even talked about the whole other part portion of this game here where at the end, whoever wins, you are building this deck of cards. So you're taking cards in and out of this deck and changing the game for future plays. Right. Well, so that's the part about this game that I also found intriguing besides the whole Chancellor political thing, right? Because I always like that. I like social deduction games. I like whenever there's intrigue. Like Game of Thrones, second edition has a lot of that kind of stuff going on. 
what's unique about this one is whoever wins, that kind of ends up becoming the center of the board for the next time. So the board somewhat sounds, if I'm understanding correctly, the board somewhat changes based off of who won last. So it has yeah. a legacy light feeling without being actual legacy. So it's more right. like this thing happened in the past, so it's going to change our start for which the future, which I is really cool, I think. I think is really interesting in the fact that if you play, say you play 10 games, then that deck if you are heavy into combat or you're heavy into some sort of diplomacy or if you're heavy into something that you do as a group, your deck is just going to get more geared for that thing, which I think is really interesting. Well, I think it's more less like you know, you've sculpting a deck versus like, well, since the Chancellor won last time, add these goals in as a possible end game goal. Like you're just adding things in or removing things. I don't think you're super, super sculpting the deck. Like I don't, it's not like a, I don't feel like you'll get like that deck buildery feel from it or that legacy feel. Like I say, it's like very legacy-like where it has legacy elements where just the setup and how you kind of set up is changed based off of who won last time. But And everybody can go ahead and come back to this game, and you can play different factions and everything yeah. and be different people. Well, you would every time. And it's – well, I'm just – I'm saying it's not like – Oh, you're not stuck with a character. Right. Yeah. You're you not don't like have to play one thing. It's not Chancellor. a legacy game. Right. It just has these legacy aspects to it, you Which know? Which I'm 100% for. It kind of reminds me of uh, Scythe's Rise of Fenris, right? Where ev every single time you play Rise of Fenris, it's a completely separate game, but some stuff from the game before carries over and can affect how the next game kind of goes, either different bonuses or secret objectives or, or whatever. Something kind of comes over. Now, that one obviously is a true legacy game because each thing builds on the other more and more and more, where this one would just would feel like the difference of game one versus game two, where there's some slight changes based off of game one. And I really like that idea without feeling like a hard legacy game where you're like, if I can't get John to come back over and play this, we can't play. You can right, play it right. solo. You can play it various different ways with different groups, different people. I really like that aspect of it. I just think for me personally, it's going to be a lot of just rules checking for like this situation does this, which does this, which then triggers this, and then a lot of rules checking in a way that I don't like. The meeples in this are adorable, and the one thing that we haven't mentioned is that, I mean, we have several games that are in that $100 range, and this is the first one that we're going to talk about today. This yeah. is a $90 game for your base pledge on this, and I know for me and Dr. Glory Hog, like, we can only back so many 90 to $150 games, guys, yeah, okay? Yeah, like there's bucks. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw only down we a can couple of them. So many we can do, okay? We, we do actually purchase these games. We do actually back these games. Yeah. If we want to back all four of them one week, we end up having to choose between all those games and because we can, only, we can only back so many, you know? With this one here, this one I feel like is going to be easier to get pe to show people, so I think yeah. it's going to be a little bit better as far as you know going back to Vast and Root and everything. I think it's going to be much easier to get to the table than Vast or Root. I think it's yes. a step in the right direction. It is. It is. But do you do you think that the art helped or hurt this game? Because I know that they were trying to get the art in the same sort of feel and the same sort of world with it and everything, but this is really unlike. I don't feel like it's the same thing as Root, right? I think people are going to draw conclusions that it's very similar to Root based off the art. Um, for me personally, like I like the art in Root. It makes sense. you got the four little furry factions fighting each other in the <laughs> forest, you know, furry or feathered fighting each other in the forest. So, like That makes a lot of sense for me. Um, I don't understand it as much on this one. I think I would have gone a different art direction, but I also don't have a company to, to make those types of decisions for. I am just a man behind a microphone. So we have here Ellen asking, that was my next question, is this one overpriced? And that is an interesting question because this is essentially a big deck of cards and then you have your board and then chits and stuff for 100 bucks on here. I believe you have a very big deck of cards, though, because you are building those where you're taking things in and out with this, okay? And uh, w what else do we have here? I was looking through... Well, like Alan was saying, he doesn't get uh, Root to the table very much. Right. It's definitely one that you end up teaching. I feel like the issue I have with Root is if you don't have, like, the same people to kind of play it a lot, mm -hmm. you're missing out on a lot of the experience. Because if one player is weaker in the strategy game, it really just throws the whole game off. So if you've got, like, one new person, throws it off. And to be perfectly frank, if it doesn't play really, really well at two, a lot of those games oh that don't yeah. play well at two, they're off my radar this year because – when I looked back at a year, 360 games we played last year, 78% of them or something like that was at, like, two-player. Two-player counts, yeah. Period. It has to play well at two on so that So if it doesn't play us. really well at two, I don't want to play a modified rules version. 
I want to play something that was meant to be played at two. I want to play something that says two dash four. Oh, this is the other thing. No, you choose games versus burritos. And I was going to bring that up too this week. I've like been eating less burritos, right, which so has been helping. <laughs> two, four, six, eight. That's like, okay. If it's ninety dollars, that's five nights worth of burritos, really. Yeah, you're for getting like multiple your nights. Okay, so y it's we your have food to budget your Chipotle food budget for the week. We have to make sure that we're gonna play this game for a full month of weekends because that's date night for a month. You yeah, know, so we're like in this weird, <laughs> we're in this real weird realm now. We're like, since I'm no longer in school because I graduated, I have more free time to dedicate to very specific like legacy style games, right, or campaign style games but still want the vast majority of my games to be just good the first time I play it, the third time I play it, and not have to play it 90 times to really enjoy it. All right, Dr. Glory Hog, would you back this game? No. No. I'm a, I'm a no on this one. Excited about the overall idea and concept <sighs> of this one. I hate to take like that middle road. I'm not opposed to buying this one in the future. I, I need to play it to see if it's what I think it is. Because, so it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure it's what I want it to be. An uh, Aussie ga solo gamer says, ha ha, $90 US, then I work out the Aussie dollar conversion. I suppose there is one disadvantage to living in Australia. That and all the murder trees. I heard you guys got bushes out there <gasps> that are straight up trying to kill you. Oh, my goodness. No good. Okay. I'm trying to think about this one. This one was, I thought I was going to come in here really strong with this one, and then I wasn't sure because... Usually the videos cement my, like, yeah, this is definitely what I yeah, want. Yeah, I wasn't sure on this Watching one. Watching the video on this one made me less sure just because of him having to explain all the different things that trigger all the different things, which is something I normally like as a Magic player, playing Magic together. And I like triggers. I mean, I like those types of games that have combos right. and, and engine building. I like this seems more like simple stuff like movement has triggers, and I, I don't like that. Almost For me personally, I almost like – Root and vast more so than this particular one, and I think like it's because of those ones a lot too. I know, and because like you have little miniatures and you're traveling through things and stuff. Which in this one here, you are traveling to different areas and you're trying you're to, just moving to a locate card. secrets and stuff. But I think this one's a little bit more diplomatic. And let's just be honest, guys. I'm a strategic gamer, and I set up for wars and games. I'm not a dip diplomatic character. Okay, so yeah, if there's she, a way to go to war instead of diplomacy. She'll take it. I'm just going to do the strategic war portion, okay? <laughs> like, Where I do the that's opposite. all I'm going to do. I really like <laughs> the diplomacy aspect of it and then the inevitable betrayal at the end. Inevitable betrayal. Yeah, so I love the diplomacy aspect of a lot of those types of games because although I fought in wars, I like the idea of trying to set yourself up until you know for sure you're going to win and then just be like, steamroll. And the win. That's that's how I like to play. For this one, for me, I, I'm putting this one on hold because one, there's so many different Kickstarters that are huge this week, and right. I have another one in mind that I really want as my number one. There's two big old hundred dollar plus ones coming but up. But I can't say anything bad about any of these Kickstarters. Like all of our stuff this week are tiny, the tiniest little nitpicks for things. Yes, because they're, they're compared against each other. Yeah. If these were all in separate months, I think I would have different, slightly different Insanely opinions. Insanely different opinions Because on they'd it. be hitting us, hitting our wallet at different times. But when right. they have to compete against each other, you've got to make the hard choices. It's I'm like a race. I'm super excited that Cassandra is going to go ahead and buy the railroad one because that means we'll probably play it <laughs> at a convention. <laughs> That's right. I'll make sure she brings <laughs> it. Uh, you know, I, I hope somebody I know gets Oath because I would still like to play it. Because I'm not 100% like negative. There's definitely some games where I'm like, nope, don't want it. And you um, start in different areas and stuff for the game and yeah, I think on different times and stuff. It's really interesting. The game's really interesting. Right, but I think it's it's more the interesting route versus the I'm super hyped about this game. I like the legacy por portion of this, yeah. like the legacy style portion of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of good things about this. These are nitpicks, guys. I feel so bad for like nitpicking things this week because it is like – the tiniest little things that we're talking about here. This looks like a great game. Like, I just don't know if that particular one's for me. And that could definitely be the case, which, you know, you know, we kind of both have to agree that it's a game for us before we usually jump the, tr uh, you which know, I'm more down for the 18, on $100 game. the 18 XX railroad games than that particular one, you know? Yeah. Not that Pacific Rail is an 18 No, XX. not that Pacific Rail is, but it's the intro to yeah. it. <laughs> All right, guys. Next up, we have Foundations of Rome. This is by Arcane Wonders. You're going to be playing with two to four players. This is going to last about 60 to 90 minutes. This is by Emerson. I love Emerson. Emerson is like the sweetest guy. I don't know if anybody else here has met Emerson in person, but Emerson, 
brought me cough drops at a convention oh, because really? oh, that's right you told yeah me about that. Be, and i was like oh my gosh you're the nicest person ever it was your voice was so hoarse i know my voice was so bad i had met him the night before and i was like oh my gosh what do i do and he's like oh you need cough drops do you have any i was like no i don't and he's like what booth are you at i'll come and give you some and he did he came and gave me cough drops so not only is he a fantastic designer of the century uh line century yeah. uh what's it world new world Spice Road. Well, so Spice Road, a new world, and there is um, Eastern Continents, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And but he's also those a super games. nice person. Okay. <laughs> I haven't actually met him personally. Um, just real quick, I wanted to say that Sir William said that you really like the, the ambition of Leader Games. And you know oh what? Oh, yeah. I agree. I want that company to succeed and to be around because they are doing things that I never personally thought of. So they're definitely in a special space. Um, ahead of the game from a lot of other companies. That being said, not all their games are going to always work for me, you know? So that, the that's the case. And they have, like, a really big following of people that are like, these games are amazing. Like, yeah. they have a huge, awesome following, which is great. Well, there's, like, a, it's just like we talk about a lot of times, right? There's, like, great miniature games out there, but we don't have the time to play them every weekend, so yeah. we don't get into them because we just can't give them the time they need to be as – to get the full mm -hmm. enjoyment from them. And I'm – kind of afraid that that's how some of the leader games go. We don't play with the same people all the same all the time and have the luxury of playing the same game over and over and over again every single weekend. We're typically like, hey, here's a game I learned, here's a game you learned. Let's play them, let's do it, and then let's play it again or whatever. But we don't usually play the same games over and over and over again. We're always rotating through the newest games and things like that. So we just, this yeah, I don't think I can give it the time it needs to be the best. This Foundation of Rome's box here is a suburbia collector's edition -y size style box. size box. This box Massive darkness all stacked up with is like insanely huge. These minis are little mini masterpieces of buildings. When I scrolled down and I saw their little Roman statues, like the Venus statue and stuff mm -hmm. like that, that they have that you can start putting in the game and stuff, I was like, holy crap. Not only is your little city that you put together going to look amazing, like just somebody walking by the table is going to be like, oh my gosh, what is this game? But the detail that they put into this game is gorgeous. Like this is a gorgeous game for your table, guys. And if you want to meet people at conventions, put these games on your table. Yeah. And people will come to your table and be like, oh, what are you playing? Can I play with you? And then, ha ha, now you have a new gaming friend. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> We've definitely lured people in when we first started with things like, you know, like Ice Cool or Flick 'em Up. And That's right. And when they come over, you're like, cool, cool, cool. So you want to play Scythe? You know? So, yeah, definitely. So for me, my initial impression on this game when I saw it, obviously I put it on the list because of the designer, which I've liked a lot of his Emerson, games. Emerson, yeah. I liked all the Century Spice Road and, all, and going forward. Um, so that's what, made me, that's what made me put it initially on the list. But then as I looked at just the top of the page and everything, I was like, yeah, I'm out. I don't want another big, huge box game. It was almost an, an automatic out for me. I was like, man, it's just another big box game. What is this going to do? Is this going to be a game I'm even going to play? It's probably going to be this real intense game and everything. <laughs> and I like to watch videos the day of, um, if I can, to just kind of you know, Re refresh, refresh myself. It's been a couple days or yeah. whatever. And to see what people look like when they're actually playing it. And I will tell you the truth. Becca Scott sold me on this game. Did I was watching <laughs> Game the Game with Ivan Van Norman and Becca Scott. And um, I, yeah, I completely did a 180 on this one. This did is you? my game of the week. Oh, for sure. your game this of the, the week. This is the one okay. I'm backing. So comments wise, we have saw a couple playthroughs of this game fast, but it still has some depth to it. Great combination to go yes. with the visual look of it. We have Alan says, you can also run your video channel re reviewing Kickstarters. And that makes you friends. That's that how is we true. met Greg. We met that Greg is true. in our podcast. <laughs> and Walter says, that's how you hook them. Absolutely. So this game, as soon as I saw, one, that it was Emerson, I looked into the game. And mm -hmm. then two, when I saw the mechanics of this game, I was super excited because this is a game that you could teach somebody in five minutes. And then once you're like, and go, release into the world. And then it goes, uh. You're like, well, hold on. What do I want to do? Now I have to make sure that my buildings are making me enough money to purchase other lots. And, and population. And population. And also go ahead and make sure that I'm strategically placing and buying lots so because I can place bigger buildings. Trigger, 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 trigger. Yes. And that's amazing. So deceptively like 
strategic in this game. I can oh, see yeah. how you would go ahead and start playing this game and just get all of your placements wrong the first time. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> so this game, um, and we don't talk a lot about the Kickstarter ahead of time because we want to kind of save right. it fresh for the show. I was mentioning right before we started, this game reminds me of Suburbia, Collector's Edition, right? We just played that recently with Game Boy Geek. I had never played Suburbia before. You had never played Suburbia before. Fairly easy. Boom. You get a tile. You buy the tile. You put the tile down. If it can trigger something, it triggers something. Suburbia, right? Really simple to kind of explain to somebody. Here's your population. Here's your income. Boom. That's it. This has that same style of feel where you're like, you need population. You need income. If you need a loan, you can get it from, you know, the Senate. Go forth. It's really basic to explain. But it's all in where you put your different pieces. If I put this here, I'm going to get two points for every other population around me. And if I put this here, I'm going to get a point for every merchant around me. If I do this over here, it's all about the placement. And then you've got the cool bidding track where you're trying to buy different things with money. Yes. And you could be like, oh, yeah, I can tell you're going to want to set up one of those L-shaped buildings. I can go ahead and nope. buy that and put a little library there instead. Not today. Be like, sorry, I guess you're not dropping that huge building. I'm going to put a library oh, there. you like this library? Which is going to get you points <laughs> and take away points from somebody else. But not like in a mean way. I read a book. I am super sold. Yeah. Super, super sold. sold. Yeah. I was at first I was like, oh, why couldn't you just do this with like little tiles instead of having the buildings and everything? But I'm like, you know what? Y you only you can only splurge on so many games. Well, right. And, and this seems like one that's worth splurging. on. Here's the really cool thing is that they could have gone with a completely polyomino thing with this because essentially you're placing things in a polyomino way when you're trying to fit buildings together. But the fact that they are actual little buildings and add such a visual like context to it and everything you don't actually feel like you're playing one of those games that is going through this cycle of being run out or run through you know mm -hmm. and i have to say as far as we had talked about this last year and uh miniatures and nudity and stuff this is the way to do it the, the right way guys where like oh it's yeah. classy and pretty and cool and it fits the theme and everything and i'm still and okay if it's based off a of historical you can show your stuff. child and play with your child and it's okay guys <laughs> okay so bravo kudos to them for that you know geez this one here though yeah i'm gonna have to say this was my number one this week, guys. I'm going to back this. Like, I wanted to back this so hard <laughs> before the show, and I didn't. I waited for all of you guys. Which the includes me, because oh. I was telling her I wanted to get in on Oath before this. Yes. And initially, when I first made the list, I was like, oh, that Pacific Rails looks really, really good. And this was like literally an so hour, two hours before the show. I was just like, yeah, we've got to get this game. This uh, is the one. Alan says, this almost sounds like a reskin of Suburbia. How does it differ? So this one here, you're all playing on the same board. And I think that's a huge, huge difference from Suburbia because your placement is important for yourself as well as it can block other players or uh -huh. other players can take things from you. you like get to buying the lots. You get to influence people so much more mm -hmm. than you would in suburbia. And that's one of my things about suburbia is that although you're building your cities and everything and here, and they do off of other trigger people, other people. You don't interact a ton. You don't interact. And this has tons of player interaction in the center of this board. So that is a huge difference. And that makes, that makes this game better in my opinion because you have more interaction between players which means that you have less downtime because players are wondering what you're doing and if what you're doing is going to affect them right now for their next turn you know so this is a, a pretty hot topic right game space so we don't own suburbia like so right. we played another friend's copy of it uh we enjoyed the game immensely we were like wow i'm surprised how have i never played this before this was a lot of fun i could see playing this again i don't want to buy it at the retail level because i want all this fancy stuff but that being what it is <laughs> I think they occupy a similar game space where if you like su the things in Suburbia, you're going to like the feeling that you have in this game also. If you've already got a big collector's edition of one, I could see maybe not going on the other one. I think it's going to kind of be in that same kind of wheelhouse, but they are definitely different games. And since we don't have Suburbia, this one is like 100% all in on us. Like, it just makes sense. Like, it's, yeah, I'm and I'm super hyped up on Suburbia because we just played it like not even a week ago for the first time. But that's why I'm making the comparison. But, man, I am just – I don't know. I, I don't even know how to explain how excited I am about All this right. game. Watching Game the Game there's, sold me. There's a lot of good comments here. So Luke says, I would buy the cardboard tile version of this game mm -hmm. for me. This game does not warrant the Calax space. I can definitely we understand that. We have, with more players, this one is a bit more random. 
I don't know. I think this one's a bit more strategic for me. At least that's the way I see it because it is very tactical. Because you when have you're on the board. a specific amount of buildings. You know what your buildings are and ahead of time. Where in suburbia, the tiles flip, right? So I went all in on getting profit every time somebody played a restaurant. Guess what never came out again? Restaurants. We saw two other restaurants the whole game. She burned one. I burned one. Never got profit off those restaurants. And I invested three tiles into this. And this one, I know exactly what's on my board. With suburbia i feel like some of those things can get lost when you're trying to add things up and everything this is a much simpler gameplay as far as that goes not that it's not in depth because it is strategic but you're going to be able to teach it to people a lot faster and they're going to catch on more quickly with this one that. here yeah let's see here i believe there's an alternative startup that allows drafting of the yes, initial spots I think as well yeah is. i think i saw and that also i also have to mention that this is not going to be out in retail stores yeah, that's another big thing. They're saying this one is going to be a Kickstarter. Kickstarter only. And I'm not sure if – I'm going to have to get back with the company and stuff if they're going to do a sort of cardboard-style one. I don't think For they this, are. I think they're I going mean, all in on this. I and don't if know. if you look at it – It mean, looks amazing, and I wouldn't well, want to buy it any other way, personally. Is this one at like 900000 or something like that? No, I think that's the Dark Tower one. No, Dark Tower is over – This one's 300000 okay, Yeah, 300, around 300000 okay. No, Dark Tower is probably – it's over a million because it was over a million when I when we looked at it on Monday. So, yeah, for me personally, this is just a win. I think it's going to look beautiful. It's got crunchiness that I enjoy. Um, it's got that kind of thing where, like, this triggers that type of stuff that you can enjoy. You can upgrade your houses midway through. So you're oh not right. like, oh, I placed this down. This is stuck. You can upgrade your stuff. There's a lot of, like, really good euro -y mechanics where, like, you're adding up the points at the end and you're just, like, watching somebody race ahead and you're going, oh, no, oh, no, am I going to be able to catch up to that person when I finish and score out my victory points? And, yeah, I, I think I'm I'm sold, guys. Okay. I don't even know what to say about it. I'm sold. This looks like a just ton of fun. <laughs> Says, no, they said they have no other plans for any other version. They are definitely pushing the FOMO. Restoration Games, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, better check again. I'm just going to say that even if yeah. this was available as a cardboard piece, these miniatures are so amazing. I'm backing this game. Yeah. Like, that's just it. I'm backing the game. I wanted to back this game before this segment started. Like, I've been looking at this game for a week telling people about it because it looks amazing. It's a, by an excellent designer. You're going to be able to play it with not just your gaming friends. You're going to be able to teach people. And it's going to bring people to your table when you're at conventions and stuff. This, like, checks so many boxes for me. It's not even real. Like, yeah. I'm so insanely excited about this game, guys. It definitely I feels like this perfect niche that I feel like we're missing in our collection. Right? Which we probably aren't actually Which missing tier? it, but it feels like it. <laughs> so I'm 100% in on the, the base pledge, right? I think which is, like, 90 um, but I might be talking to more. I don't necessarily want the coins, and that's just because I've got coins for a lot of other different games, and unless the coins are dramatically unique looking or shaped like in Waterdeep or Scythe right. or Sorcerer City, I'm not as excited about them because I've got a lot of round coins. I can kind of find those anywhere, and I've got Roxley Deluxe Poker Chips coming and all that kind of stuff, um, and I don't necessarily want a fifth player expansion because I don't know if I want to bring this out to a fifth person. It might be fine, right. but it might make the game go really longer than I want it. Um, but I do like how the whole box is set up, and I like some of the other add-ons, and I just need to go into more detail about the ones I specifically want and see if we match up. And with if so, then it's well, that card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. So as far as the different pledges go on this one here, the base pledge is going to give you the game and then access to the pledge manager after, which is a great pledge to oh, I guess it's only start at. More, huh? To start at, you know. Yeah. But you can change your mind, like, if you want to add stuff on and everything. That's always nice. But... I want the extra monuments and stuff. Like, I want the monument expansion because I love the buildings and everything in this game. Like, it looks amazing. And, I mean, I, I love that era. I love that Roman style. I love all the art that they're doing for these and these pieces and stuff. So, like, that for me is a must for this game. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go big guys, okay? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> So, oh yeah, the gosh. people who pledged for the fully painted, Oh, right? my goodness, so I've super been talking jealous. to <laughs> Vernon Piper about it and talking about Arcadia Quest because we had the opportunity to back that with the painting. But since she was trying to get it for my birthday, she went with the one that would get delivered sooner. It ended up not getting delivered on my birthday anyways. Um, but, yeah, if you can get it painted by somebody that good, it does all the painting and, like, the dice tower and stuff. Yeah, I am jealous, too. I and don't have that kind of cash, but we have amazing looking. New board order that says, I can't justify the cost of some of these, but this one looks amazing. But I just can't. See, Like, new board order's torn right new now. New board order, <laughs> let me give you a little tip. 
don't look at the shipping. So then you can just go, oh, man, and then you what? Go, it's later. $40. And then you oh, go, oh, man. Oh, well, I've already backed it, so I guess I'm just going to pay the 40 bucks. <laughs> That's how I justify it. I try not to think about it because once you add in oh. shipping, which is what Greg does a lot, he always goes, yeah, but with shipping, bro, don't add with shipping at me because – that will make me make me change my mind, and I want this game, and I don't want to change my mind. Look at and it's twenty bucks more for the deluxe. I didn't realize it's twenty bucks more. Yeah, for the all no, in, we're doing we're doing this, yeah, guys. We'll go all all in. in, all in. Are you ready for the deluxe? Let's do it. One, two, deluxe. deluxe. Okay. All in, guys. Okay. All, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So don't look at the shipping, Alan. Jeez. Yes, you look at that later. I when have that part of my paying. computer just kind of covered up where the shipping usually shows up. <laughs> Next up, guys, we have Return to Dark Tower. There's so much hype for this game, guys. So much hype. This is by Restoration Games. We are going to go ahead and play this at one to four players. It's a cooperative game. Mm -hmm. It's going to last about 100 to 120 minutes. This game is the Return to Dark Tower. So it's not exactly like the old Dark Tower, but it does have the tower and everything. It is a new version of this game, except... Brought into like a new technological world, which is amazing. Right, so got like the app for it, which looks really amazing. Yes. Okay. So I am so sad. I was gonna go ahead and go look at this game in person, but I did not get to go to PAX Unplugged at the time. And oh no. I know this was one of the games that I wanted to look at so bad. I know Game Boy Geek da did, and I talked to him specifically about this game and everything. That tower is amazing. It is not just something that, okay, whenever you press the app, it operates and stuff. Like, it goes off at different times and stuff. Like, it, it is with the app, so it communicates with the app, and when you make choices on the app, then it knows what's happening in the app, and it keeps track of a lot of things in the game that you're going through. So this game actually falls in line with a lot of some, some of the other games that we've reviewed lately where they have a lot of technological aspects in it, you know? Right. My biggest question for you guys and the comments is, Is this does this have too much technology in it? Which I'm going to assume no, because like this is crazy backed at this point. And I personally feel like this is sort of like the way I want the technology to go in board games, where you still have a board game. You're still controlling the map and the area and everything. Maybe you're making some choices on the app so then you can get truly surprised by things so you don't have one person, like, looking at a card and then they kind of know everything and read it to you and stuff, you know. It takes that portion out of it, and it makes, like, your choices and stuff truly chancy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then having that actual tower on your table is amazing. It makes sounds. It lights up. Things happen during the game. I'm a big fan of like skulls rolling out of things. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that says about me as a person, but skulls rolling out of things is like a big win You just for me. want the skulls rolling out of things? I would buy this at just the tower level. I don't even need the game. <laughs> I think I would use this like as a dice tower, but like I would need like pips put Somebody onto my skulls. Somebody walks into your house and you have it right by your door and it's like, ah! <laughs> well, technically, when somebody walks into our house right now, we do have a tower. We have the Tower of Isengard we from do. Lord of the Rings. It's we about do. that big. It's a Lego. or mm. No, it's bigger than that. It's, it's like that. And uh, it's a really big Lego set that I built. And, it, yeah, there's a giant dark tower when you walk into our home. All right. Already. So we it would bookend. We have here new board order. Got to see a copy at PAX U. It looks really great. The tower was so cool. Petter says, this would be the one I'd pick if I had the money right now plus shipping. <laughs> Kabuki Kid says total rework of the game. So Kabuki Kid probably played it the original. We what it sounds like. have a f I have a friend that has the original that and is backing this one as well. So I'm going to get the side by side comparison because I have not okay. played the older style game. I have not. Walter says I want to play Dark Tower, but I need to see how it plays with two players. Uh, Alan says somehow I miss seeing this at PAX. I don't know if it was a I remember being contacted by someone at Restoration Games, and I was like, all right, you know, I want to view this, but I don't know if it was just mostly media that they were showing it mm. off to or if it was everybody. I don't know if it was a secret, and that may have been why you missed it, Alan, okay? Oh, my gosh, we have so many comments on here, guys. <laughs> Seems like a good tech level with the app. Seemed just uh, to support faster play, not take away from play. Right, and which I that's, that's yes, key. Yes, super key. I don't want to spend my time looking at the app so hard and so long that it takes you out of the game. And I think the tower brings you back with that. But I also don't want to sit there and look at an Excel spreadsheet trying to figure out what bonuses I have and what damage I'm doing and all that. That's another thing that goes the other way. you got to find that happy medium. Right. So Battle Cry says, I'm all in on Return to the Dark Tower. The more I see, the faster I want it, which I think this is one of the ones that comes out 
like not this year, but next year. I'll go down and check here in a minute. That's awesome. Show us. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun one to do. You do the comparison. You do oh, like the, the old game, and then you s then you do the newer one. That would be awesome. <laughs> Luke says totally fine with the tech enhancements of this. I think they really did a good job, Luke, with just combining those two things in a perfect way. Like I really can't say how well they did that. It's some people just go a little bit too much, too far on the technological side, I think, right now. Because board gamers still want to play things in person. They don't want everything on there, you know? Right. You don't want the whole world on that. And Restoration Games says, we were running open demos, too, but we were in the back of the hall. That's why you guys didn't see them, you know? Okay. That, might make sense. that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. It was a tiny bit secreted away, okay? <laughs> so Restoration Games is a company that is super interesting to me. It's another one of those companies that I'm glad exists, right? Because, oh, absolutely. You know, bringing back some of these classic games from when we were kids and upgrading. I'm waiting for Mousetrap still because <laughs> that was a game I always wanted to be epic, and it ended up never working the way I wanted it to. But with today's technology and <gasps> machines and stuff, okay. I feel like a Mousetrap made with, like, wood or metal would be better than the plastic. Mousetrap was the yeah. game that you wanted to play so badly, but just getting the thing set up to like actually like forever. work in one thing when you put the ball down was the hardest thing possible. That was the whole mini game of Mousetrap. And then half the time it would fall apart you know, as the ball as you was were going, going through it. I you're know. Like, okay, so that didn't <laughs> Guys, work. Guys, I do. I want a better Mousetrap game. I would play Mousetrap. Like, I'd play it right now, except, you know, it'd still be hard we, to play. We do still have it. I bought it to play with the kid um, when she was younger, and... The it's time it took me to set up, she would just get bored. Still be mouse trapped the dexterity game is what yeah. <laughs> it becomes. Well, that's what we ended up doing. We ended up playing with it with like Ninja Turtles and stuff. All but right. My point is that they've done a lot of really cool things with games from childhood and stuff. And this is a game. This is like a grail game for a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. It wasn't personally for me. I never actually played this one. But I know a lot of people are super in on this one. And Fireball Island, the restoration games that I've played and liked have been like unmatched. I really enjoyed Unmatched. Oh, yeah. Unmatched. Absolutely. Uh, we played that one recently. And it then we got Dinosaur Tea Party as a gift. And we really enjoyed playing that one with our daughter and everything. She really enjoyed. Which was a really cool twist on like, twist on like a guess, guess who. who type yeah. Of, so right, type so of much game. more enjoyable when you're talking about dragons. So I'm glad there's a company out there doing this. So with this one here, they did update and upgrade the map as far as like making things like if you look at the two maps, because I did go look back and look at the old Dark Tower game and the map on that was so pale and plain and everything. I love the way that they did the map. It's very colorful. You're very easily able to see the different areas and where everything is at. I love the fact that you have skulls coming out of the tower, guys, and that you put those on the different locations and those start corrupting the areas and stuff like this is going to be such a fun, another table game where you set it on the table and then you're going to make like crazy friends, like this just being on the table and like it's sounding like there's crows there and having skulls throw down and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to be an amazing game to see. Well, what's interesting, if you look through like the videos of this and stuff, the people's reaction, people are just, just amazed by this. They're having such a good time. And what an amazing game with those minis. Like those buildings look amazing, yeah. guys. Oh, they did everything so good in this game. I'm so excited. I wish, though, that I had played the previous version to get, like, that hype. I feel like I would be more hyped if I had played the previous version. Right. It's like when people freak out about, like, say, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something, right? But you never watched it as a kid. Now, I don't know who you are as a person and why you <laughs> And why you didn't. Life, but it could happen, <laughs> right? But you're just not going to get that same nostalgia feeling where you're just like, oh, my God, they're bringing it back. And you're so excited, right? That's kind of how I feel about it like this. Like, I understand the hype. It looks amazing. I can see why people are so excited about it. I just don't have any of that personal internal hype going because I never played. From the, the nostalgia. Yes. Yeah. And that's the only thing I feel like I'm missing from this to go, like, oh. all crazy all in on it. Kabuki Kid still holding out for Thunder Road. 100% with you on that one. I want that one so bad. <laughs> all right. So... Let's see some of the comments here. I think I'm going to go on the campaign to get someone in on my gaming group. So they can go in on it. That's how you do it, Alan. You yeah. get somebody else to go in on it if you can't get in on it, okay? <laughs> a Silver Liam says, I want Restoration Omega Virus. And again, this is another company that I'd really like to throw my support behind. I 100% mm -hmm. agree, agree. It's a fantastic company. And Battlecry says, I want to throw more money at it right now. Thunder what? Oh, my goodness. It's a little, like, car chase sort of game. Well, not a chase sort of game. But, yeah, you're going to have to look it up. So 
it's Mad is Max it style. Oh, okay. I was thinking, like, is it like Days of Thunder with Tom Cruise? No, the no. The best racing movie. <laughs> no, it's not. But <laughs> it was a racing movie, and it did have Tom Cruise in it. There you go. So Kabuki Kid just gave Restoration Games a little, like, hey, by the way, you should totally do this. Mousetrap. <laughs> I would Mousetrap. I don't even know why, but if there was a functioning, working mousetrap, I would stupid do buy it. it just because... I always wanted that game to work, and I never really got to play a full game of it. I don't think ever in my life. All right, so the other thing is I have the base pledge for this at $125. Based off of the games that we've seen today, I'm going to say $125 pledge is an excellent, excellent price for this game. Yeah, With this Bluetooth mm -hmm. tower and everything, and then you're getting the app and everything with it, like... This is very well priced. I am not disappointed by this at all. There's some other technolog technology based games that you see that price tag and you're like, oh, yeah. no thanks, not today, like can't do this. Yes, this one here, I feel like it's appropriately priced for what you're getting. I mean, I, I thought it was going to be more, honestly. I thought it was going to be more, I too, it was gonna whenever be like I first a saw it. 175 at least for the base. Me, too, me, too. But I mean, it looks amazing. I don't have yeah. anything bad to say, guys. Like, this was number two on my list just because we don't have, like, the nostalgia hype for it. And that was that was the only reason why it was number two on our list because I want to back this game. Yeah, and I, and I, I do too, um, which is unfortunate because I only make so much money. <laughs> I actually should be making money right now, but I'm doing this show instead. Oh. I um, Yeah, I. <gasps> this sounds so weird, but it's just like I do want this game. I just don't want to spend my money on it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, is there a way for you to buy it that somehow isn't connected to my account? Like, to our joint account? Is there, like, a way? Can we sell something else? So, Restoration says, for the record, I'm totally joking. We get tons of requests for both of those. That's excellent. I love that you guys get tons of requests for those. Yeah, I'm going to say, I mean, maybe we can back this for my birthday or something. I don't know. I, I do know somebody already well, that's, that's backing it. That's it's a, a matter call. of, like... It's just a matter of allocating Getting it the right funds. Right, <laughs> because, man, this was a tough week, guys. This was a really, really tough week. dollars ish games. None of them look bad. No. I'm going to say, and though, the these two. Pacific Rail didn't look bad either. Pacific Rail didn't look. There was nothing bad, technically, to say about any of these. We were nitpicking these games to death this week. And I think out of the fray, I mean, we have the Return to Dark Tower and then the foundations of Rome. Those were the two I was most excited about this game. Yeah, I feel like I'll about play, this week. I feel like I'll play Foundations of Rome the most. Mm -hmm. Oh, and because of the style of play. I feel like Dark, d the Dark Tower, Return to the Dark Tower though, will be the one that will be the biggest hit for my more casual friends and for um I got conventions. Like I could see us doing like a table where we're demoing it or something like that. I could see that being <laughs> a humongous humongous hit. We already eat ramen. Yeah, <laughs> we already. I eat can't ramen. eat more ramen. I like ramen though. I really enjoy ramen. We don't eat ramen because I have a ramen cookbook. I I love ramen. That's yeah. why. <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely one of those things where I'm not going to say I'm going to back okay. it today, but I would not be surprised if it ended up getting backed in like the next. Here's week one whenever note. Like another paycheck drops. Here's one note that I do have between the two of them, is that. Return of Dark Tower is going to take longer because it is a longer style play game, whereas mm -hmm. Foundations of Rome is going to be a little bit faster because you have a little bit more bidding and just kind of placement with things. Uh, oh, the I Return of Dark that. Tower is more of a medieval style strategic Almost game. Almost like a dungeon crawl, but not. Yeah, and it's, it's more it's like D&D based. Cooperative, yeah. whereas the other That's one, true. Foundations of Rome, is going to be a little bit more cutthroat so and here's stuff. Here's the you best know? comment, right? is Battle Cry's comment. I can't wait to show my kids Dark Tower. It's going to melt their <laughs> freaking brains. <laughs> and I didn't think about that because if I got out Foundations of Rome, my kid would be like, cool, and she would play, right? But there's nothing there to probably excite her the same way. If I got out Dark Tower... For your be, kid? She'd be like, I have the hype! Like, freaking <laughs> out. She'd be like, put more skulls in! I'm like, the skulls are bad. She'd be like, I don't care! So I think that, that there's definitely a difference between the two games. Yeah, I, I think we're at the back both. Okay, so Kabuki Kid, I agree. You should go ahead and, and bug Justin every chance about Thunder Road. I'm 100% down for that. Yes, we're probably going to be eating ramen because... There's at least two games I want to back this week. Like, one for sure. Is anyone giving you, like, money for your birthday? Like, your mom or something? Oh, somebody? that's a good call. I hope. That's a good call. We should call them. <laughs> hey, 
hey, I know we're I know we're adults and everything, but if you oh. want to bring back the old birthday money and a car, you know, birthday oh. money and a card thing, we'd be okay with they that. They did they did tech right on this. This was excellent. This was an a great week and a hard choice for everybody. Like these games were great. There's something for everybody. I feel like this week. Oh yeah. As far as games, you I know, there's not a single one of the games that we covered this week that I would be upset to receive or to have oh, back yeah. or anything like that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think. It's just, w which comes down to everybody. Everyone's got their own personal budget, right? I don't know how much money you make. You don't know how much money I make. It's not as much as you think. And so you got to kind of pick <laughs> and choose. Um, so my number one is still going to definitely be Foundations, Foundations of Rome. Foundations of Rome. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. which was Surprising. the one that I had dismissed probably the, the earliest when yeah. I was looking through them. Um, but I'm going to try to find a way to make Dark Tower work. Absolutely. It's a cooperative game, so it's going to be good. Like in the fact we, that you're all against yeah, the power. Yeah, we do definitely enjoy cooperative Absolutely, games. yeah. And if we can't back it, we need to figure out if, like, if, well, if somebody we else we know is else. getting it. <laughs> we do have some other friends that we could probably play it with. Okay, Silver Liam says, I'm sure, I'm for sure with Oath and Dark Tower, and I agree, I can't wait to play Dark Tower with my kids, and I think uh, the marbles in Volcar are sweet. So guys, in the comments, let us know exactly what you guys are backing this week. And if we forgot anything to look at next week, there's we also- There's definitely more for next week. Want to say thank you so much for Restoration Games coming to our stream today and being able to answer any questions that our viewers might have and you know be able to talk about your game with us. We always appreciate it whenever game companies come to our streams. And if we have any questions that are like tiny little things we didn't think about, mm -hmm. it gets answered on site or right, something that- our viewers bring up and stuff. That's always super awesome to have. We appreciate you guys here, and we appreciate all of our viewers that came and watched today. This Alan, was a huge we week. Will, we'll give you a pass since you're going to be driving <laughs> to our home state, <laughs> and we will be seeing you on Saturday. And but if you were not seeing us on Saturday, then we, there'd be no excuses for missing our show. Martin says, time to rent out the bedroom to afford it. And I totally agree. We're going to have to start renting out spaces in our house. You know what? We have a studio right here. So if some people want to come and record in our studio, we, we can, can just rent be it like, out, yeah, by the hour or charge, something. charge for Kickstarter games. So it work. It work. <laughs> I, maybe we should start charging to play games with people. Is that, <laughs> is that a thing? Do people, can people get away with it? I like playing games too much. I would As cave. But you, would, you always have to like lose. Well, I would and just be like, ah, oh, I would just shucks. cave because I would just be like, yeah, I'll play anyways. But there we go. Sell some older games. We need to do that. Yeah. We have quite a few older games that we are actually going to. It's sell. on our list of things to do. That'll cry. Absolutely. It's more of a transporting them type of situation. All right. So later we have what we're going to play Oceans on Sunday. Yes, we are yes. playing Oceans on Sunday. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to be doing a playthrough of. What are you about? Z to Shot. Z okay. shot on the Steve Jackson Games channel. So next week as well, I believe. On Friday, you thinking or? Um, it's Friday or Saturday. I got to move up the date and everything, but they are going to be on YouTube, so you okay. can go ahead and subscribe to them. I'm pretty ring bells, do all sorts oceans. of stuff. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I played I played uh, Evolution at Phoenix Comic Con like five or six years ago. When Whenever it was they were first, first coming yeah, out, yeah, they were just printed off and they were stuck in Magic the Gathering sleeves and stuff. And I remember. And I was a Magic player then, too. I'd, p I'd pull them out and be like, what did you put this under? I'm like, this is actually a decent card. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know if you want to play test with this card. Like, But, yeah, I enjoyed it then. Um, it made my buddy really salty because he lost. But I enjoyed it then, and I'm excited to see what Oceans has brought to everything with the whole deep and the Absolutely. And I can't wait to Absolutely. play it with you guys. And you guys can tell us what we're doing wrong. You'll get to hear all of our whale voices as we play the game, you know? You don't know. <laughs> Winner. Yeah. <laughs> As we go I along. I will never sell my magic cards again. <laughs> nice try, Petter. Thanks nice again. Try. Thanks again for everybody that joined us magic today. Magic keeps me warm at night. We will see you guys next week with more Kickstarters. Make sure to catch some of our other shows. We Unless will talk to you later. you get hit by a meteor or Alan Oh, my gosh. A That's terrible. Don't say that. Well, I hope Alan's not a serial killer. Because we're meeting him. Well, we're going to play games with him either way. It's like, uh, all right, you know. Kill we'll us after the games. Yeah, after the games, okay? <laughs> We'll see you later. Bye.